You're listening to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast, the show that proves no one stumbles upon success ever. With your host, Lou Need. Every Mondays and Thursdays, we deliver cold heart evidence behind the power of a robust morning routine. Get ready to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Good morning, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. My name is Alu Need and I am your host. And today I have the honor of introducing Kevin Winning up to the mic today. And he is a phenomenal guest and he is, well, he has sev- he has a great experience. He has managed software development for clients, including Whole Foods, Capital One, IBM, Fox, National Geographic, and Amazon. He is now an adventure traveler leader combining cyclists and photography in exotic lo- locations. Since 2009, he has worked in various types of photography, um, doing s- studio, commercials, travel, architecture, and publishing editorial and lifestyle stories and photos. Kevin, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. My pleasure. Um, Today, we will discuss solopreneurs. I actually not, have not heard of the term, so I am really excited to hearing your input, your expertise on it, and uh, making businesses from your personal passion. This show is really focused on um, listeners and, all, and myself discovering our passion and what our desires are, what our gifts and talents are, and how to utilize it in um in business and serve back and give back to the world. The whole idea is, uh, at least for myself and, and the solopreneur term, term, if you haven't heard of that before, is is really just exactly what you were saying, to take your, what you're good at, take your own personal passions and, and turn those into something that really gives people the maximum benefit. So when I think of you know an entrepreneur, uh, that's a term everybody's familiar with. I think of somebody who's who's starting a business with the intent of employing a lot of other people and building a large business, building a large cash flow business, possibly even at some point going public, you know, taking that to the to the public markets and and building a large sustainable business with a lot of other employees and, and possibly stakeholders and board members. And when I think of solopreneur, I'm thinking of a one man operation where you probably will have other people involved in the business. I certainly do, but that is not intended to grow beyond the skills and the capabilities of what you yourself can handle. And that I, I find is is true of a lot of people out there. And I hear when I talk to a lot of solopreneurs, they say, I'm a CEO. Well, you're a CEO of what? Well, I have a business where I'm a one-man business. Okay, well, you're not a CEO. You're a solopreneur. A CEO is building a vision and building a company and you're employing you know, mm. hundreds or thousands of other people. Um, I, I guess you can call yourself a CEO if you want, but a solopreneur to me is just an, an honest way of saying I'm approaching taking all of these skills that I've built through these different experiences in my life, patch- packaging them together and delivering that value in a unique way that only I am suited to do. And, and that I think is super important. And so many people are going that route now where they're realizing I have something valuable to offer that can only be done if I do it in my own unique way. Whereas if you get into a big company and you're part of a a big machine where you're just one of the hundreds of people at that company every day, a lot of times your your talents, your skills get lost. They aren't utilized properly. And you know that if you were to you know just focus on your own talents and giving those to other companies or other people, that you would be able to uh, make a lot more progress more quickly. So that's to me what a solopreneur is. And that's what I'm working on. Fascinating. Um, It's the ability to add significance to others, but not having to reach too far out for skill sets because um, you've actually acquired them. You've learned them along the way. And it's it's really something that kind of makes your heart sing. That's a very good way to say it. Yes, exactly. Uh, So the like for myself specifically, the the cycling and the photography even uh, and I and I don't know if this is uh, you know, part of well this isn't part of my main website but I also run employeeartprogram.com and that's an offshoot of these other things that I do where basically I run these photography tours built uh, for cyclists so we go ride our bikes in different places in the world take photos and I've worked on that through being a travel photographer for several years and uh, and then I decided to turn it into something where I can take other guests along with me. And 
unfortunately, a lot of people will come home from travels to other parts of the world with great photos, but then they just end up leaving them on a hard drive and they never look at them again. You know, sometimes share mm-hmm. them on social media, but then that's about it. So the uh, the employee art program was to me the next step of, you know, I have worked in these big companies and I've seen, you know, all of these offices where I walk through and I, I'm a consultant. So I go in to these big businesses, you know, two, three, four times a year when I'm working on a project with them. And a lot of times I'll go to the offices and there's just nothing on the wall. It's just completely blank. And those are spaces where I know they have brilliant artists and photographers with art that's probably sitting at home or that they've taken. So we can take those artworks and display them in their offices. And now we bring a part of their personal life into their office. So it's just taking that next step. And and to me, that's what a, a good entrepreneur or business person is always doing is saying, I have these skills. I have these things to offer. What's the next step? What is what is missing? You know, what is some other value that people could get out of something that they're already doing? I'm not changing anybody's behavior. I'm just giving them an outlet for something that they're already passionate about. And so looking at you, you're grabbing the images, the pictures, the, the memories that they've had on these trips and you're portraying it in pictures for the office. Right. It's at, right, at the at the most simple level. We gather up those photos mm-hmm. and artworks from the people that work at that company. I take care of mounting them and framing them and and displaying them in their office. So we could just go hang them throughout the office. And then they hang there for a year. Then they take them down and take them home. So it's an employee benefit where they get to hang on to those artworks. I'm kind of going off on a tangent there. but uh, No, I think that's very neat because even at my, corp- my corporation, we have tons of um, pictures and I'm like, oh, who's that from? Who's this painting from? How did that get here? And they're like, oh, it was here with the building. It, can- it has no <laughs> signif- significance, right? It has no meaning. It's not relatable in any way. But um, your idea and your business around that is actually bringing people together because they have a conversation point. They get to know each- um, people and their experiences. Exactly. And connect in that way. Exactly. That's the whole concept behind it. And it's something personally meaningful to you. You know, if you have a piece of art up there or if it's, you know, if you're not an artist or a photographer, you see something from your coworker and you ask them about it. And why did they create that? And, and it creates, like you said, just conversation and meaningful uh, connections between the people in the office, you know, with, with people maybe that you would normally never talk to. But you strike up the conversation mm-hmm. over something that's un- not work related. Yeah, we spend so much time in the office. We spend so much time at work and it's also very um very secluded, very siloed. You know, you go into your your box office, you go into your box, what do you call that? cubicle and <laughs> you kind of stay to yourself and therefore you don't interact much unless it's business related, unless it's a meeting. And so you don't that that connection and engagement is missed. Exactly. And mm-hmm. so what you're doing is um unique and also well, I don't know any other company that's doing it. So what are some challenges of starting that business um, related to photography and providing it in that space? Well, the the biggest challenge really is getting people to, uh, well, getting it in front of people. Marketing is always the hardest part uh, as a solopreneur or a small business, getting in front of the right people who will be accepting of the idea. Uh, even with like with my photography, with my cycling, with with this business, the employee art program, it's very easy to lock yourself in a room, come up with an idea, and think, "Wow, this is brilliant! Everybody's going to love this." But then, I, I call it walking the idea around, getting it out in front of people, going to friends who work in these type of offices, getting it in front of HR managers uh, for this employee art program idea, and saying, "Here's how I think it's going to work." Here, and then and then actually. Uh, talking through it or workshopping it with them. And then uh, I would suggest to anybody who's interested in going into business by yourself, uh, you know, kind of run a, uh, what I would call a beta program before you actually put your money down and, and start investing it in it. You know, don't mortgage the house until you actually run a program or run, run your project in some way and verify it. Yes, I can actually cash flow this business. It's going to make a profit. Other people are interested in purchasing this from me. So just the, uh, the entire startup portion of taking it from an idea, from a kernel of an idea to actuality is, is probably the, the most difficult part of that. Once you've actually got it out into the world and you've got some clients that can vouch for you and say, yes, I believe in what Kevin's doing. He does a good job. He's reliable. You can count on him. Then 
then things go much, much easier. It's getting those first few clients and letting them know that you've fully thought something through and that you're capable uh, because, yeah, just translating that from your own mind into actuality is probably the hardest step. Yeah, um, that is sound advice, um, Kevin. Um, I read the book um, Traction. Um, get a grip on your business and by that's the author Gino, Gino Gino Wickman and he talked about while you are building while you are creating your product to get feedback to get customer feedback to ensure that it is marketable to ensure that there will be a cash flow um, from this venture as you mentioned because it's important to to know every to know that people will want it will want it will want your product they'll want your service and so it's it's don't just not to focus just on the building not to focus just on the creation development process but also um, engaging your potential um, avatar your potential client your ideal customer and there yeah that's a I haven't read that particular book but there's yeah there's a lot of culture around uh, around startups and and saying. You know, just just work really, really, really hard and and fail a lot. And and I don't subscribe to that, (laughs) that methodology, Mm -hmm. because there are there are proper ways to go about it where you don't have to uh, burn the candle at both ends for months and months or years and years. Uh, There are smart ways to go about it, too. Mm -hmm. Now, let's um, shift gears to intentionally lost dot com. Now, what inspires you to travel and why should everyone travel? So. Travel for me kind of came out of uh, out of the photography. I wanted to see if I could turn my skill for photography into an income through travel photography. And I discovered after about a year and a half of that that I had the skill for it. I didn't ha- really have the passion for it, meaning that I didn't like the way. I, I still don't really care for the way that travel photography, the travel photography business runs. And it's more that's more of an idealistic thing on my part. I want to go out and make beautiful photos that I can hang on the wall as, as art rather than, uh, say publications and, and publishing those in journals or you know, publishing those for websites, because so much of that is, I, I would call it production photography where it's get a properly exposed photo and, and that's it. You know, you're doing coverage of a restaurant, you're doing coverage of a, a facility, a hotel, uh, of the the popular sites to visit. And it feels like you're just checking off a box for a, for a publicist saying, yep, I got the shot. Now I can come home. And to me, that wasn't really enjoyable. The part of that I enjoy about travel is it every time you get off the plane in a new location, you see the world differently. You're the same person. You didn't magically become a different person overnight, but somehow your eyes are opened. You start to see, people differently. You see their culture. You see the way that they live. You you just realize that there's a whole different part to the world than where you live every day. And that to me, that fascination with with travel is what I wanted to to continue in my life. And that's why I decided, hey, I'm going to go ahead and make a company around this. I'm going to build this so I can take other guests with me, introduce them to unique experiences. And, uh, and I ditched the travel photography right away. I decided that's that's not a route that makes sense for me. But building guest tours where I can take people, introduce them to fascinating new places in a, in a way that's specific to their interests. Cycling and photography is a very niche thing that I didn't see a business out there in the world for. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and create this mm-hmm. because it aligns with my skills, something I'm good at. And then out of that mm-hmm. came employee art program saying, okay, what happens after the, after the trip is done? Everybody goes home. What do they do with those photos? Nothing. Hey, I have a great idea here because I've seen this as a problem in all of the businesses that I that I work in. Uh, when I consult with them, they need something in their in their offices to you know decorate the walls and to start that you know start that employee bonding with each other and start those conversations. So they all they all grew out of the same thing, if you will. But uh, for me, the <laughs> yeah. So the, to answer the question, never lose your sense of of wonder about things and see things with with fresh eyes. And that to me is what travel does for us. And that could be to a strange country, or that could be just to a state that you've never visited. If you live in the US, it could be to a place that you haven't been to since you were a kid. And maybe that's, you know, an hour drive from where you live, but you just haven't been there for for years and years and years. And you need to go revisit that now that you have grown and you're a different person. Just go 
see that place with fresh eyes mm-hmm. again. I um, I love the way you you talked about traveling because I'm an avid traveler myself. I I have goals to travel the world. I've, I have s- traveled 17 so far, and 26 states in the um in the United States and. Traveling gives you perspective, as you were mentioning. It, it kind of, it gives you compassion, especially when you go off to third world countries and you see how people live in a simplistic life, yet they they find joy and deep happiness. It makes you realize we don't need all these things to be happy. If we can um, get to the core of the, the human nature and the human need to, to connect and connect with nature, not just with each other, but with nature, you realize like there's a whole other world out there just by taking a glimpse at a mountain, just um, taking a glimpse of, of the vast beauty. It, it brings peace. Well, there's the, you, you had a ton of things there that we could unpack and talk about for the next two hours, but I wholeheartedly agree. Just, uh, yeah, it gives you total perspective and, and Often, and we, when you travel a lot, you'll hear the term, uh, my brain just uh, lost the term there, but basically reverse culture shock when you come mm. back from travels and you return home and you look at your, you look around your house or you look at the things that you have and at the supermarket, you can buy anything that you want. And, um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to refer specifically to a trip I took to Ghana, Africa. I was there with a project project cure trip where it was with some doctors and nurses and we were giving medical care. And you realize in those villages, they have almost nothing. And yet they're very, very happy people because they have each other and they have each other for, uh, for everything. They rely on those relationships, those families, the, the history there and the things aren't what make them happy. You know, having each other and having just a lifestyle that they all love is what makes them happy. And I come home and I realize, wow, I, I don't need <laughs> most of these things to be happy, but yet I, you know, they're in my life and, and I could probably do with a lot less. Yeah. And if you, I, I have this great quote, if you don't, if you don't leave, you won't live. You no, know, if you don't travel, you won't get to experience that. You won't get the, the eye opening, the insight that you do from traveling and, and I, and I love it. And I, my, my goal is to travel the world. I'm not sure if I can make a business out of it. Like you, <laughs> you, you've, you've mastered that art and it's, I mean, kudos to you for doing that. But the goal is to travel, travel the world and just control of your time. It's your biggest asset. You want to spend it where you you want to, you want to spend it with who you want to intentionally. It's the goal for me. Kevin, unravel a little bit about finding your purpose, because that's what you have done here. You you found your niche, you found your purpose, and you are making a living out of it. What are some tips for our listeners on how to um, get where you are? Well, I'm going to tie this specifically to the the other conversation that we wanted to have, maybe about a bit about your daily routine and yeah. uh, and morning routine. And for me, so when I first started doing the the adventure travel and, and practicing travel photography. I was, uh, I was dating a girl. We weren't yet married. And then through over the course of the next couple of years, we decided we we're going to get married. And then instantly we had, uh, we had, a, had a kid, uh, got, got pregnant right away and, and decided, you know, we're going to go ahead and start a family cause I'm not young anymore. So we decided we're going to go ahead and do this right away. And that immediately changed, uh, you know, changed my goals, changed my perspective, changed what's important in my life. And I had to decide, you know, how, how do all of these pieces fit together? Do I leave some things and, uh, and I just don't work on them at all? Do I quit traveling? Do I quit my travel photography? And I devised, you know, ways in my, in my life where I sort of segment my day. So I, I start off my day usually at 4.30 or 5 a.m. where I'm, I'm working on projects that are specific to my photography, whether that's writing articles, building a website, actually editing photos, uh, working on something that's that's creative around my photography. And I usually do that in the morning right now because I've got a couple of kids, the only quiet, quiet place and quiet time <laughs> in the house where I can actually uh, set aside a couple of hours, a you know, block of a couple of hours just to focus on one thing where I don't have other business pressures or people needing my time. Uh, and that that to me was very important. I used to do that in the evenings after dinner. Uh, that used to be my time now. Well, that's, that's taken up with family. So it was important to me to keep that in my life somewhere. So I said, I'm going to put that in the morning. I'm going to wake up earlier and make that important in the morning. But then in my afternoon, 
Uh, so, well, so I do that in the morning and then the next chunk of my day, essentially after the kids get up, we feed them breakfast. I usually take them off to daycare. Uh, so we've got family time there for about an hour and a half in the morning after they wake up. And then I come back and I dig right into whatever's important for the day. I'm getting right to my, my business, which is working with my clients, working with uh, the software developers that I work with, any of the projects that we have active, uh, things that I've got to do there. So right now, I'm not making my entire living from my photography and from the travel. I also you know, supplement that with my my software consulting business. And I love doing that as well. It's, it is very creative. We're solving difficult problems every day. Uh, the But the time I dedicate to that, it usually goes until about two o'clock in the afternoon where I'm focused on the big hairy problems. I call them <laughs> whatever needs my, my most focused attention to get through those problems, working with my clients and developers. I focus on those for that middle chunk of the day. And then after 2 PM in the afternoon is when I give myself a chance to uh, just explore again. And this really kind of comes to the heart of the question. How do you find your purpose? I think, we we too often get too busy. We fill our day with too many things, uh, and we never give ourselves time to sit back and take stock and reflect, or just go down a path for a little ways and see where it goes. So after you know, from two to four in the afternoon is usually when I've got a, a sticky note here on my on my monitor with three things. Usually it's they change every week. Three things that I want to research. Things that I've been thinking about that I want to know more about. Is this something that I should incorporate into my business? Is this, is this a skill I should learn? Should I read this book? Uh, so I've got a, a list of those things and I spend those two hours in the afternoon, not on, you know, so the morning is structured time. I actually need to accomplish something with that time. I've got to edit my photos. I've got to write an article. I've got to build a web page, whatever that is in the afternoon. If I waste that two hours, that's, that's a good time wasted. I don't have to have an outcome with those two hours. That's just time to, to let myself explore something. And then almost inevitably, at some point, those items that I've done in the afternoon come back around to a morning task. I've realized, okay, this is something I need to dig into a little further. I need to explore this. I need to research this. Now it becomes one of those tasks I do in the morning. And then I do have an outcome that I need from it. I need to figure out how I'm going to incorporate this into my business. But if I didn't give myself to explore those paths in the afternoon, I never would understand a different facet to my business or a different marketing approach that I'm going to take with employee art program or a different, you know, something that I need to need to add to my daily process. Mm -hmm. So the, the three things that you do in the afternoon is to, it's exploring, it's learning, it's researching, it's actually finding something that you are interested in. You possibly could be interested in and in delving into it deeper. And I, I love what you said about we are too busy and we don't take the time to to learn, take the time to grow. Self-development is key. Um, Jim Rohn says, work harder on yourself than you do at your job. And because once that happens, you'll be better at what you do. You'll be better at everything else that, that yet that you do if you're able to grow and develop. So I love that, that idea, that aspect of um, researching three things that are new because you don't, people don't always are aware of what their, their, their gifts are, their purpose are. And I, I will say too that that time in the afternoon, a lot of times they're, those things on the list are like they're things that are occupying my mind in space, you know, that I, that I think about throughout the day. And once I've spent 15, 20 minutes really diving into it, just focusing on that one topic, I realize, you know what, this isn't worth it. This doesn't have any value for me. I can cross this off the list and just, and it immediately it frees up another block of space in my mind because I realize, nope, I don't, I don't ever need to think about that again. I'm done with that. Yeah, you've, you've... So it's, it's both adding things to your life and, and building skills as well as just releasing things that you don't need to worry about. To make room for more important things to flow in because we, we, we got to look at it as a jar that's getting filled up and you have to empty it out with gunk or whatever that is unnecessary or that's not in alignment with your goal. Very well said. Yep. Your business plan. So I really like like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, 
what else do you um partake in for a morning routines? Now I know the the mentally stimulation part of it at four thirty up at four thirty doing photography work and editing, and then um exploring in the afternoon. Any other items? Those are those are the big things for me. Uh, I I try and segment my my days that way. And and if you if you know you know families with kids or you have kids yourself, you know some you know every day is a little bit different. Yeah. You can't always ex- expect a routine. To, to fall exactly the same. So I give myself that flexibility. Uh, in the afternoons, if I if I don't feel like I have anything that I really want to dive into and research, that's when I'll do my do my workout, go for a bike ride, uh, get get some physical activity in. And then uh, evening time is pretty much always always family mm-hmm. time. Uh, and then there was there's one other topic you put on our, our list to talk about here, and that's working, working rem- remotely. So when I'm traveling, uh, a lot of times I do have to work on my projects, work with my clients and the developers. And, and that's, uh, to me, that has to be structured Mm -hmm. time. I have to let people know specifically where I'm going to be when, and, and that's very important for, for my mornings, especially when I'm traveling. That first thing in the day for me is to know where I'm going to be and when I'm going to be available setting up my meetings, setting up my follow-ups, uh, because a lot of the travel that I do in, uh, in different parts of the world, I don't have connection. Uh, so I'll be you know, going from an airport to uh, a hotel or a facility, and I know for the next three hours while I'm traveling overland, I'm not going to have any, any connections. So nobody can reach me. So that's part of my, my morning routine when I'm traveling to let people know, hey, I'm reachable during these hours today. And then when I'm offline, of course, I'm working on uh, on things that I need to focus on, because if you're if you've ever managed people, you know you got you got your own work oh, to yeah. do too. It's not all meetings and just managing people, um, but that's so that's an important another important part of my morning routine. More so when I'm traveling than when I'm home, but uh, just you know giving those expectations, and that's that's just part of the uh, remote work lifestyle. Mm-hmm. If you've never done a remote work lifestyle, the the me- number one key to that is just. Uh, over communicating and letting people know, you know, what to expect from you when, and, and that's the, that's pretty much the only way you can work as a, as a fully remote worker, especially with important key, you know, clients who are paying you, paying you big yeah. money. You can't be unreachable. And if you are, they've got to know why and when they can get a hold of you next. Absolutely. Be professional and communicate, over communicate. I like that. Tell us how can we connect with you? The main website we're, I publish the most is going to be intentionally lost.com. That's all of my photography ramblings about anything travel related. And then employee art program.com. That is right now a, the website is built specifically for the clients that I'm working with. So if you go there, you're not going to see a lot of information. You can gather the information there about employee art program. If you're, if you have any interest in you know, sharing that internally at your company, but there's not a lot of you know, daily activity there as far as posts and, and articles and such. So as far as personal things, intentionally lost.com is the best place to find me. And then same on Facebook and Instagram. I post a lot on those profiles, facebook.com slash intentionally lost and same Instagram dot com forward slash intentionally lost. Thank you for sharing, Kevin. I really appreciate the time and what you shared with us on Solopreneur. It's a one man show, but you do have people that you work with, um, you collaborate with to run the show, but it's using your skills. It's using your talent. It's using your passion to actually add value to the world and, and, um, add and help other people find find that joy in whatever um, that you do. And for you, it's cycling. And I've run several marathon and I don't know if I can cycle as long <laughs> anymore uh, as I used to, as I used to. Um, I thank you for sharing about marketing, the beta program, um, ensuring that this is, there's cash flow and that this is feasible. This is an actual um, business that's viable. And um, our listeners can definitely take value from early risers, you know, being up early and actually setting the time block to do your one thing, to focus on the one thing, to, to plan out the day. So Kevin, I thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. I've really enjoyed this conversation. You too. Have a great day. Well, all right, morning enthusiasts. That's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you love the best morning routine ever podcast, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes or Google Play. 
While you're at it, tell a friend about the show. Be sure to visit bestmorningroutineever.com and our Facebook group to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic free bonus content. Until next time.